Hello and welcome. Um, today's Bite Size PD is all about helping students ask deeper questions. So while you are waiting for the PD to begin, will you please answer in the Zoom chat or Google Meet in this case, how you are currently using student questioning to enrich learning. So how do you get kids asking questions in your classroom context? And we'll go ahead and get started. Um, today's professional development norms, I would like you to primarily just focus on being, being a learner and um, seeing how these strategies might improve student outcomes in your classroom and get kids asking questions deeper. Uh, please make sure you're on mute. If you have any questions, type it in the chat and closed captioning is available for those who prefer it. In our MTSS framework today, we'll primarily be working in the cognitive rigor domain, which is depth of knowledge under standards for instruction. And our learning intention today is to teach students how to produce their own questions, improve upon those questions, strategize on them, um, and then reflect on their learning. And you'll experience this technique today. It is called the question formulation technique. And you'll know you are successful when you can use this in your classroom context. All right, let's see if the audio works. Probably not. All right. Well, um, this is a little two-year-old Zoe who's asking why, 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 why over and over. Um, and if you've spent any time around toddlers, you know this is probably pretty familiar. So why am I sharing this? Well, um, according to Warren Berger's book, Beautiful Questions in the Classroom, three-year-olds ask about 26 questions per hour to adults. And by kindergarten, those fall to about one per hour and by fifth grade, less than that. So the amount of questions that students are asking, their ability to um, be curious and tapping into those critical thinking skills is really important um, so that they can become expert learners. So a few questions um, that we'll talk, we'll discuss. So what barriers have you encountered with student-led questions in today's situation? I'd like you to just reflect on that. Some barriers you've encountered with student-led questions. So maybe it is, um, you know, get it, when you have them ask questions, they ask kind of superficial questions. Maybe it is releasing that responsibility to students feels a little scary and a little out of control. Um, but just reflect in your classroom, what barriers have you encountered? All right, we're going to get right into it. So um, the first step of this question formulation technique that we'll be working with today is to generate questions that use a focus. So your focus could be a picture, it could be a song, um, a mathematical equation, a quote, a political cartoon in social studies. And this could also be done digitally on a Jamboard. I'm also including this tool that I really like for multilingual learners, but also just as a scaffold for any students that are maybe new to asking their own questions. That's kind of helping them come with a wide range of questions using this matrix. So um, another thing to think about is to support your multilingual learners, you may want to have translations and visuals for question words, purposefully partnering students. So if you have students with um, that share a home language, and are maybe on the same or different level of language acquisition, just being uh, mindful of that. And then you'll wanna teach this process in a face-to-face -face environment if possible with a non-content topic first. Um, so maybe some translations and visuals like for those question words would look like this for Spanish so that it can help students differentiate between the types of questions that we're looking for. All right, so you're gonna have two minutes and I'm gonna have you write down as many questions as possible. Um, the rules go, don't stop to answer them, don't judge them, don't stop to discuss them, particularly if you're doing this with a group. And don't change, and if you have a statement, um, it needs to be changed into a question. So you're gonna have two minutes um, and you're writing as many questions as you can about this focus. And the focus is gonna show up in just a moment. So here is our focus for today. Questioning isn't taught in most schools. It's a quote by Warren Berger. So you're thinking about what questions you have about this quote. Questioning isn't taught in most schools. And you'll have your two minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and move this since we don't have anyone there. 
And once you've given yourself a couple minutes, we're going to move on to step two, which is categorizing those questions. So this is the part where we start improving upon the questions that have been generated by your students. So um, what you are going to do is you are going to classify your students or your questions as either being closed ended or open ended by marking them with a C or an O. So what I mean by that is if it's a closed ended question, you could answer it with a yes or no. Um, if it is an open ended question, it will require more explanation. Uh, a one word answer would also kind of fall under the category of being a closed question. So you'll go through your list, just um, annotating them with a C for closed ended and an O for open ended. And I'll give you some time to do that. And once we've done that, um, we're going to move on to step three, which is then improving upon those questions. So you're going to take one of your closed ended questions and you're going to change it so that it's open ended. And then you'll do the same for an open-ended question you have and change it into a closed-ended question. And the purpose here is to just note that they're both important. Sometimes we want open-ended questions. Sometimes we want a closed-ended question so that we can move on with our, um, with our inquiry. So both are equally as important. You're just going to modify a couple of those questions to turn them into the opposite. Then you'll move on to step four, which is where you prioritize those questions. So when you look through your list of questions that you have, think about what you actually want the answer to. What are three questions that you think are the most important? So going back to our question focus, if our quote was, questioning is not taught in most schools, what three questions do you think are most important, most relevant to that quote? And you're gonna choose three. And then after you've chosen your top three, you're gonna consider, and this might be a great opportunity to discuss for um, your students, partner share, maybe group, why did you choose those three questions? Where are your priority questions in the sequence of your entire list? Were they questions you generated near the end of your um, list? Were they questions that you had from the get-go? You're just kind of, it's that metacognition of being aware of your thinking. So what, what patterns do you notice? What do you see in the types of questions that you chose? And then you'll move on to step five, which is strategizing and action planning. So we've had students generating questions. You've generated questions. Um, you've improved upon some of those questions. And then now we're going to be coming up with strategies for um, furthering your learning on those questions. So you have your three priority questions, and you're going to now think about what you need to know to answer those questions. So that would go under your information and then what you would need to do in order to find those answers. And we know that not all of them do have answers, right? If it's an open-ended question that maybe isn't something that is going to have a concrete answer, then what kind of information would you need to know in order to have a concrete answer? So you're just going to list out information that you need and then what you need to do in order to get that information. After you've strategized and done your action plan, you then can um, use these questions to solicit your own research in your classrooms. So sometimes the purpose is just nothing. It was to practice generating questions and that's it. Sometimes you can use the questions for a next step like one of these. So you could have a Socratic seminar about the question. You could use it for a classroom discussion. Could be your exit ticket. Um, could be something you use to tailor instruction for the next day could become a full on project, um, could be a debate topic. So there's a whole bunch of things that could happen once you prioritized your questions with your class. And then um, you might want to have someone chart questions or and then kind of on your teacher and your, your teacher lens, you're, you're looking to see, are they asking critical and creative questions? If they're not, maybe we go through that process again. Maybe we model it. Maybe we um, guide it a little bit more heavily or if they're really asking these deep questions and they're um you know you have the 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 time and the and the space in your um your instruction to pursue them you might give student choice in how they want to move on with their inquiry so then maybe okay 
So here is just a quick video. Um, so the whole, this technique that you just experienced is called the question formulation technique, and it's one way to get students to ask deeper questions. Um, there's a whole bunch of research or resources that can be found from the group that came up with this technique called the Right Question Institute, and I'll be linking that at the end of today's presentation. This is a fourth grade example that we're, we can watch. Um, because of time today, I'll just kind of leave it here for you. We are a very small inner city school. We have 15 classrooms, K to five. Very diverse. We typically hover between the high 80s, low 90s percent. So that will be available to you. It's 12 minutes and we're gonna watch it today. Um, all right. So now that you've gone through that process, I want you to think about what you learned, how you learned it, and what you understand differently now. And this is really where you'd be, um, a lot of the power is for students uh, because they're practicing divergent thinking, which is when they're generating a lot of questions outwardly, and then convergent thinking as well when they're changing their closed to open and open to closed questions. It's a great exercise in metacognitive thinking, and it really establishes a culture of learning in your classroom. Here's just a slide that kind of broke, breaks down that whole process that you just experienced um, for your use. And again, it's from the Right Question Institute, rightquestion.org. Um, I like this. It also came from Right Question in Institute, but it kind of shows you where you might want to begin for those of you teaching elementary or early elementary. Where where might you start? Um, because that's a maybe those skills are still developing. So this kind of tells you where you might begin. And then finally, um, I have this Padlet with tons of other strategies and tools for deepening student questioning that you're welcome to explore by just clicking on that um, screenshot there. You can explore the Right Question Institute website by clicking the link. It's got free subject and grade level specific resources, all related to question formulation technique. And then um, a lot of this information um, that I shared with you here today came from Beth Skelton, who is a consultant for multilingual learners, and she's phenomenal. So you can click there to kind of explore some of her work. And I will leave you with a closing thought, which is by David Pearson, um, that the questions a student asks after reading a text are a better assessment than the questions a student can answer about that text. So kind of flipping the script on, you know, once they've done the learning, we're really focusing on what's that next step um, so that they become that expert level learner that, um, you know, continues on and finds their own answers and explores their own ideas. Um, thank you for listening today. And here are some links to remember. Uh, click down at the bottom for your relicensure credit. And that second bullet point will take you to all of our bite-sized PDs done by the fabulous people here in Canyons. And thank you for listening. Have a great day.